Hey guys, part four of your AR-15 Buyer's Guide. Today we're talking about the Bolt Carrier Group, the heart and soul of your rifle, probably the most important piece of your rifle, and it is the moving part. This is the part that has friction. This is the part that takes all of the gas, all of the pressure, all of that is inflicted onto this part, and it is the part that's gonna most influence your reliability and help with your accuracy. So let's talk about the Bolt Carrier Group. We all know what it is, we all know what it does, but what do we need to know about it when you're building an AR-15 rifle? First and foremost, you need to know that there's two kinds of bolt carrier groups. And there's actually more than that, but we're gonna kind of simplify this for the average builder, not the expert user. So as a new guy, what do you need to know? Well, there's two kinds of bolt carrier groups. One up on the top here is the AR-15. This one here lower is the M16. And yes, you can legally use the M16 bolt in your AR-15 rifle. It does not affect the actual performance of the rifle in any way, shape, or form. It doesn't make it, you know, select fire or full auto. It functions exactly the same. So, M16, AR-15. M16, as you can see, has more material in this area here than the AR-15. This cutout's a little bit longer. Why is that? Well, the M16, we know, is select and full auto. So it needs this material here to engage the uh, auto sear in the uh, lower receiver. The AR-15 doesn't need it, so in order to save on manufacturing costs and make production easier, they've increased that cutout. So you do have the option, the M16 bolt will run perfectly fine in your AR-15. No big deal at all, perfectly legal. So, what is the major difference between these? Well, it's not cost, because these pretty much run the same price. You typically can get an M16 bolt and an AR-15 bolt for the same cost. However, there is a slight difference, and it's not noticeable to your average person. The theory behind it goes is that there's more material on the M16 bolt carrier group so it slows down your cycling rate and helps improve reliability, consistency, and makes your rifle a little smoother. Now, is that scientifically tested? No, absolutely not. This is what the experts, the people who shoot thousands and thousands of rounds, tell us. So I'm passing that along to you, not as a scientific fact, but this is what the experts say. This is what they've noticed, and it may be helpful to you when it comes to building a rifle, because if you want that extra little bit of reliability, you definitely may want to consider the M16 bolt carrier group. Now, do I notice a difference? Absolutely not. I can shoot these interchangeably and I cannot tell the difference. Maybe you can, but I can't. I've never seen any reliability issues between the two. Accuracy seems to be, you know, on par, you know, but like I said, this is what the experts tell us that the M16 is a little more smoother. The cycle rate is a tiny bit slower almost unnoticeable to a human at least. So there, so now let's move on. Let's talk about mil spec. Mil spec of course is always a big deal. People want their parts to be mil spec. So what is mil spec when it comes to an AR-15 bolt carrier group? Number one, it needs to be made of 158 carpenter steel. Number two, the bolt carrier group itself has to be, or I'm sorry, the bolt body has to be chrome lined, the interior of the bolt has to be chrome lined, the gas key has to be staked with grade one fasteners, and it has to have a parkerized finish. So that is your mill spec for your bolt carrier group. Your bolt carrier group is made up of a couple different parts, and typically people buy them as a group. Some people choose to buy them individually and put them together, especially when they are building a uh, a purpose-built rifle for reliability or, or accuracy, they'll often get themselves a bolt of their liking and put that into their own uh, bolt body. So what does it consist of? You have your body, you have the actual bolt itself on the end here, which is the little moving part, and that has an ejector and an extractor. The firing pin is inside here, as you can see that little metal piece. It also has the gas key up top. A cam, uh, I'm sorry, a cotter pin, and the cam pin. Those are the individual little parts. As you can see, most of them are 
you know, nothing that's going to affect your performance. Most of your performance is going to be determined by your bolt. So, what else do you need to know? Well, the bolts come in different, all kinds of finishes. You can get the Parkerized finish that the military goes with. They have a lot of the new nickel boron. Um, some of them now are even chrome lined. I'm not a fan of the new finishes. I've, I know they look great, they're really popular, but I have read some internet rumors that some of the coatings are a little bit thicker and they can affect the reliability of your rifle. I don't want to be that guinea pig guy, so I typically stick with what works. So I do tend to stick with the uh, mill stack uh, parkerized finish. Not to say I won't experiment in the future, but that's what I like. Um, another important thing in choosing your bolt carrier group is to get one that's properly staked. Oops, got a camera here. Is to get one that's properly staked. Now this one here, not the best staking job. And uh, as you can see, you have uh, what it is, and I'll explain what staking is real quick, is you can't use any kind of Loctite on these uh, fasteners here because the heat and the pressure is just going to break it down. So instead they use a punch, and they punch into the steel here to help lock those fasteners in place. And you can see these little divots along the edges. And typically what you're going to find is a punch divot on each side of both fasteners. Now, you're going to often see that these are done in a manner that's pretty hasty. You know, they tend to, one of them will be really thick, one will be barely noticeable. Um, it's something you can definitely fix. If you have some that are really light, you can go in with a punch and uh, fix it yourself. So, not the biggest thing on earth, but the problem is if it's not done correctly, it can cause your gas key to come loose and then eventually you're going to have a failure. Because after all, that is where all the pressure of gas comes into on your bolt. So it's something you definitely want to look at and make sure it is uh, staked properly. And when you get it, if it's not, get it fixed. Either bring it to someone professionally who can, or check out some videos on YouTube and do it yourself. It's really not a difficult process. So let's take one of these apart to show you what they look like on the insides, and then uh, we'll kind of wrap this up real quick. These things come apart really easy. We'll take apart the AR-15 one. This cotter pin here, you literally just pull it out with pair of pliers, set that down, that's going to make your, you can see this is dirty, it needs to be clean, your firing pin will come out, then from there, your next step is to turn that uh, cam pin, kind of 90 degrees, and that will fall onto the floor, and then your uh, bolt will come out. Now, pick that up, guys. And you can see these individual parts. Let's uh, zoom out a bit. All right, so there you go. You have your bolt. And you have your ejector here. And there is your extractor. These are your gas rings. Ooh, this is really dirty. That's the cam pin that I mentioned. Cotter pin. Firing pin. And the actual bolt body. And as you can see, there is a chrome lining in there for that. So that is part of the mill spec that it does have to be chrome lined. So, now, what do we need to know? Okay. You can buy this as one piece, you can buy it as individuals and put it together. The choice is really up to you. I highly recommend to make sure you do get a good bolt. And oftentimes, uh, it's very difficult because these things aren't really labeled. You know, you can see here, this one here does say HPT uh, MPI. So this is a uh, inspected in that method I mentioned earlier but they're not all most bolt carrier groups you're gonna get are pretty simple pretty plain Jane they really don't you know one to the next is really not much of a difference I think where to spend your money is on the good bolt get yourself a good bolt make sure it has good gas rings on it 
you know, just get something of good quality. Buying those cheap $60, $70 ones um, is not always going to be your best option. Clean that up real quick. Drive me nuts. <laughs> so you can get these things from anywhere. Like I said, you'll see these things for like $50 for those really cheap garbage ones up to several hundred dollars. Um, you know, it's all about what you're looking for out of a rifle. If you're looking for a super accurate, reliable rifle, you're going to want to go on to the higher end of that. But don't get tricked by fancy coatings and finishes that are going to cost a fortune and really not help with your performance. A simple park rise finish will always last long and do the trick. You don't need to spend that extra money on a finish because it's really not going to affect the outcome of the rifle. So I typically, I just go with a reputable dealer somebody with a good name, good reputation, and buy their parts. Now, I've bought these all as individual kits. I believe one of these, the M16 one, I believe is a Palmetto State Armory. The AR-15 is a uh, Delton. So, that's all you really need. You don't need to go too awful crazy, unless you're really looking to you know, for extreme performance out of your rifle. But for the average person, that $100 bolt carrier group is just fine, will perform well for you and never give you any issues, provided that you do make good choices and uh, take care of it. So there you go, guys, the bolt carrier group.